Appreciate everybody uh, coming out. Game week, uh, finally. Been a long time coming. A uh, ton of excitement and energy uh, in this facility right now. We had our normal Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. team meeting, and everyone was in here early and, uh, and ready to roll. And then went out there and had a fantastic uh, Tuesday practice, all three phases, which was really uh, fantastic and awesome to see. So excited for our players, for the opportunity to go out and play in williams Bryce Stadium this week. Uh, so excited for our fans to be able to be back in williams Bryce Stadium. Never will I ever, not that I did before, but I will never take uh, college football for granted and, and what makes it special. Uh, the bands, the cheerleaders, the pageantry, uh, everything that's so special about college athletics and college football uh, we all missed last year and, and couldn't be more excited about going back into a packed williams Bryce Stadium uh, this Saturday. Uh, fired up for our fans to be able to come back together because I know they've missed it. Our players have missed it. Uh, it's going to be an amazing environment in williams Bryce Stadium on Saturday night, starting with uh, the Gamecock walk. Glad that's going to be back uh, this year. So I would hope that is the biggest and best one ever to welcome our football team uh, to the stadium when they arrive on Saturday evening. Uh, we've missed our fans, and that's a great opportunity for our fan base to show our football players how much you've missed them as well. Would hope everybody would be in their seats early and created an, um, an awesome environment. I know it'll be cranked up during the game. I hope it's going to be a great environment pregame uh, as well. I know I can count on the cockpit in williams Bryce Stadium Saturday night. I know they will uh, bring it and fire it up to see those guys uh, at it. And we've got a great group of recruits that will be here uh, as well for the game on Saturday night as well. One guy, one young man coming in on an official visit, so we need to put on a great show for them uh, as well. Can't wait to get going. From an injury standpoint, uh, Trey Atkins and Wyatt Campbell both practiced today. They should be fine for Saturday night, which is uh, really good to see. Uh, Luke was out there, uh, didn't really do much. Doubt he's going to be 100% uh, Saturday night, but he was out there at practice. Hank Manos uh, is probably doubtful uh, for Saturday night. Don't know if he's quite going to be ready for, uh, to make it back. And then Rick Sandage is the one that will definitely be out for Saturday, but hope to hope to get him back soon. Uh, fired up about playing Eastern Illinois uh, this weekend. It's funny, my, my dad's very last game is the head coach at Murray State University. I was in fourth grade and it was against Eastern Illinois. At Eastern Illinois in the, what was then the 1AA, uh, but now called the FCS, the FCS playoffs, the Murray State Racers went up to uh, Eastern Illinois and Lost to them in a playoff game, quarterback by Sean Payton, quarterback, our current head coach for the New Orleans Saints. So pretty ironic that his last game before he took the head coaching job at Virginia Tech was against Eastern Illinois. And my first game as the head coach is against Eastern Illinois here at South Carolina. Uh, really looking forward to seeing uh, Bill Roth. He will be the play-by-play -play announcer for ESPN on, uh, on Saturday night. Uh, he was the longtime voice of the Hokies at Virginia Tech, came into Virginia Tech in 1988, my dad's second year as head coach, and was the radio play-by-play -play, uh, guy for pretty much my dad's entire career. So it would be pretty cool to see Bill, who essentially watched me grow up from the age of 11 until I came back to Virginia Tech to coach. Excited to see him. Uh, obviously, they lost Saturday night. Uh, got an impressive group, though. I mean, uh, they, they did not play their best, certainly the first three quarters, talking about Eastern Illinois. They've got an impressive group of transfers that have come in that are some significant playmakers uh, for them. If you look at their game the other night, had three turnovers, one of which was in the red zone going into score. They had a, uh, an interception that was returned for a touchdown when it bounced off the running back's hands. Uh, had the ball at the end of the game with the chance to win it. So that's a game I'm sure they look at and feel, feel like they had every opportunity uh, to win it. Uh, they got better as the game went on. That was obvious. You look at it in the, in the fourth quarter, Eastern Illinois' offense was out there for 30 plays in the fourth quarter alone, which means they were on pace to run 120 plays. That night, Eastern Illinois' defense was on the field for five plays in the fourth quarter the other night. So it's certainly a team that got better as the game went on. I see a group on defense that, that flies around, plays really, really hard, great group, great tacklers. And then uh, offensively, they've got a really, really athletic uh, quarterback that's got experience. There's so many times going back and you watch his video from last year, you watch his video from Saturday night, 
that uh, he should be sacked. Any other quarterback, it is a sack. And next thing you know, he's getting out of the pocket, scrambling, has his eyes downfield, and he's hitting explosive plays in the past game. So we've certainly got to do a great job of controlling the line of scrimmage and handling uh, their quarterback and his athleticism. And then they've got some impressive group of running backs that complement uh, each other well. They all have different styles, and we got to do a great job of tackling them as well. Uh, but excited for the opportunity to go play. Uh, it's an, uh, our first opponent, and, and we talk to our team always. It's about us, no matter who we're playing. Uh, we started that off today with a great practice on Tuesday and expect that to continue for uh, the rest of the week. So I know, uh, obviously, the topic of conversation, uh, what everyone is here today and wants to talk about is our uniforms. And what we're uh, – credit Fink on that one. He actually uh, mentioned doing that. So, so very good, Fink, is our uniforms. Uh, we're going to wear white helmets, garnet jerseys, and white pants on Saturday night. So there is your uniform reveal for the week. We are very thankful that Under Armour takes great care of us and gives us a lot of um, – uh, uniform options and combinations, but we're not going to get into every single week spending time and wasting a whole lot of time as a team trying to figure out what we're wearing on Saturdays. Let's worry about how we play, not what we're wearing. And I've told the players that, and uh, they're, they're on board. Does not mean we won't mix it up from time to time, uh, but let's worry about preparing ourselves to play the very best in the 10, 15 minutes that they spent last year and in previous years figuring out what they're wearing. They could have been that could have been spent preparing for the opponent and getting themselves ready to play. So we'll certainly mix it up. Uh, our players will have a say in what they're wearing. I'll certainly listen to them if there's options that they want to have. But we're not going to come out there wearing a different uniform for the next 12 weeks. I can assure you that. Um, in all seriousness, we named Zeb Nolan our starting quarterback for this week. Uh, he's a guy. Obviously, he has Power Five experience. It wasn't that long ago uh, he played in a playoff game a few week, a few months ago. Uh, he is very efficient, getting us in and out of the huddle, commanding the offense, controlling what's going on out there. He has a great understanding of what we're doing offensively because he spent the entire summer, as I know he told you guys, drawing up the playbook and, and, and coaching. So we've got a lot of confidence in, in Zeb being able to go out there and operate at a high level on Saturday night. We're not asking him to go win the football game. We'll never ask our quarterbacks to do that. We want to ask him to get us in and out of the huddle cleanly and efficiently without pre-snap penalties. Let's hand the ball to our running backs. Let's get the ball to our playmakers uh, on offense at wide receiver, tight end, and running back. Uh, offensive line, let's do a great job of running the football and protecting the quarterback, and, and let's go play. So we're not asking Zeb to go win the game on Saturday night. We're asking him to operate the offense efficiently, and we feel like he does the best job of that right now from an offensive standpoint. We have ton, a ton of confidence in all of our quarterbacks, no matter who's out there, Colton, Connor, uh, Jason, or Luke, if he were to able, able to really come along in the next few days and, and be 100%. And having said that, I'm not, I told Luke this morning and telling you guys now, I'm never going to put a player out there uh, when he's not ready to play. Uh, if Luke's not 100%, it's not worth it, whether no matter who we're playing. Uh, I want him to be out there and be at his best, where he can do what he does best and, and protect his health uh, as well. But got confidence in all those quarterbacks. Whoever is out there on, on Saturday night, uh, we, we have no issues. We run our offense the same way, but felt like Zeb was a little bit farther along, and that's why we made that decision. But again, let's not – I know what the narrative may be out there, so let's forget about and lose the, uh, the narrative of – he hasn't played a football game in two or three years, and he was walking up and down the halls like Uncle Rico talking about what he did back in the day as a quarterback. He played quarterback a few, a couple months ago. He's been a – or three months ago. He's been a graduate assistant coach since June. So like I told you guys when we activated him to our roster, he's played in a college football game a hell of a lot more recently than anybody on our pro – anyone on our team. Uh, is it a little bit unique? Yes, but it wasn't, like I said, that he played a couple years ago. He played a few months ago. He's been a coach for basically two months as a graduate assistant when uh, he was heavily involved working with the players and things like that also. So got a lot of confidence in him, got a lot of confidence in the rest of the quarterbacks, and uh, fired up for Saturday night. We'll worry about trying to beat Eastern Illinois, and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. So with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Shane, with uh, the quarterback situation, is this a case of once Luke is 100%, 
the competition will reopen, or will Luke step right in and be starter again? Yeah, I mean, I know you got to ask that. We're worried about beating Eastern Illinois, and right, that's all I'm focused on. We just had a great Tuesday practice. Let's go out there and have a great Wednesday practice right now. Let's rally around Zeb and the quarterbacks that are playing Saturday night, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, play our best on Saturday night and win this one, and then we'll worry about East Carolina and, and what's next after that. Shane, as far as the timeline, I mean, when did you feel like that Zeb really separated himself and was the guy for you guys? I mean, was there a point in our practice that you guys really felt like this feels like the guy we want to go with week one? No, I mean, honestly, I think honestly day, like day one when Zeb started playing quarterback, I mean, there was, a, I don't want to say difference, but there was a little bit of a spark and, and he came in very, it wasn't like he walked in that huddle the very first day of practice and was overwhelmed and didn't know what to do. He got in there, he made a, he called the play, he was able to get up at the line of scrimmage, he was able to change the protection based on where the pressure was coming from and was really able to operate. We had, I think it was a blitz period we had where we go against our defense. It's all blitzes, it's all third down and you know our guys are coming from everywhere. And he went out there and probably had the most impressive blitz period that we had had as a team during preseason camp. Not that it had been bad with the other ones, but just knowing where to go with the ball, knowing how, where he was protected, knowing when to get rid of it. It was just really impressive. So he started that day and then just, you know, stayed consistent. But like I talked about before, from that day, Jason and Colton and Connor, they all got better because of it, you know, after that as well. So I don't know if there was a you know, certain moment, what I told you guys before was true, that we wanted to give uh, Zeb plenty of opportunity with the first group since he hadn't had it until two weeks ago or whenever Luke got hurt. We got Jason some work with the first group last week as well. It wasn't like Zeb's been working with the ones for the last two weeks. We've been kind of mixing it up, and that's what we, we did towards the tail end of practice last week. But, you know, that's where we are. And I met with Jason yesterday, met with Zeb yesterday, and, um, you know, told him what we were doing, and away we go. <laughs> Shane, just what was the conversation like with Jason? How did he kind of take it? And what's the plan in terms of how many quarterbacks you want to play on Saturday? Yeah, uh, Jason was disappointed. I called, he came in my office yesterday. I love Jason. Like, Jason comes in my office probably twice a day just to pop in and say hello and sit down and shoot the bull. And uh, he came in yesterday, and, and no one has worked harder to – put himself in the position that he's in than Jason. I mean, he, we told him he had to lose weight. And if you were around here this summer, you'd look out there on the practice field and he'd be out there by himself just running extra, trying to lose weight, doing everything. So, so much respect for him. That's why I have confidence in him if he's out there on Saturday night. But he was certainly disappointed. I told him, you know, why we were making the decision that we did, that it wasn't an indictment on him. It's just where Zeb is right now and, and we need to, uh, get, make sure the guy that's out there that gives us the best chance to win. And for a lot of different reasons, we felt like Zeb was that guy right now. But I told Jason, and I think he told you guys well, I mean, I'd love to be able to get him in the game and, and, uh, and, and, and get him going on Saturday night. Now, that's going to depend on how he practices. Um, you know, I've watched before I came in here, watched, I was at practice, obviously, but watched about a fourth of the practice tape before I came in here. And as soon as I leave, I'll go back and finish watching practice and we'll see how he practices Wednesday and Thursday and, and Friday in our walkthrough. And if he earns the right to play, I'd love to, love to be able to get him in there and get him going early. Shane, when Jason came in and just spoke a little while ago, I mean, he, he was very impressive in terms of just how he went about things. Um, just as your experience for, as a former player and just obviously as a coach, as an assistant, and now where you are currently, how much can that make a difference on a team, especially younger guys that are coming in and still trying to figure out what college football is all about? Yeah, uh, I think it's huge. He, um, he's, he's a guy, I think, that has, he hasn't been here long, but has the respect of the people you know, on this team. They see how hard he works, and, and that's impressive that he, uh, that he did that. You know, I talked to him uh, this morning about it and, and, and talking to the media, and, and then um, uh, he, had, he had the class issue as well, so he had an easy excuse if he didn't want to come in here, and he owned up and came in here, and I think it's fantastic. It really is. I mean, it says what he's about. We talk about in this program, accountability is one of the core values we talk about all the time, and, and that's you know being accountable, coming here and, and, and answering questions, and he was certainly disappointed, but a lot of people in that situation uh, would have – blown you guys off and and gone to class and sat around and pouted and things like that and he came out today and competed had a great mindset and great attitude uh at practice and and uh and had a good day out there at practice so it's no surprise i mean he's a uh 
he's not a young guy either. I mean, he's played snaps before, and, and, and he and EJ have obviously played a lot of snaps together at, at St. Francis. So he's got it's, you know, he's been around the block a little bit, and, and uh, it's no surprise at all to hear you say that. But it's certainly when the younger guys see an older guy handling that situation like that, I think it's, I think it's great. Shane, how, how are you uh, handling what's got to be the immense amount of excitement and anticipation that you're going through this week? Or are there just so many things to do that you haven't even thought about? No, I've thought about it. Um, it's uh, just trying to, like, not be cliche, but just process and, and just stay on what's important right now. And, and certainly it wasn't like we got to Sunday and it was, oh, crap, we're in game week, all these things I got to do. I mean, I've been thinking ahead and preparing and, and everything. I mean, there's just so many things that you, as the head coach, that you just kind of took for granted as an assistant. And it's when it's the first time, whether it's, you know, what time the buses leave Friday to go to the hotel, what's our schedule at the hotel. Uh, you know, what do we wear to the team dinner on Friday night at the hotel? What do we wear to meetings on Saturday morning? And what time do the meetings start? And we, I spent a lot of time with pregame warm up. You know, what time do we come out and, and all that? There's just so many things that you think through. Uh, and I've been doing that long before this week. So thank God that, you know, I was ahead from that standpoint. But still, when you get to game week, there's still always that. I got to do this. We got to do that. Oh, I forgot about that. What about this? And there's all kinds of different scenarios. And we've covered and gone over as much of it as we could with the players as well and the coaches um, where we can get into this week and just focus on preparing to play on Saturday night. But for me, it's doing that, you know, focusing on what I got to do right now. As soon as I walk out of here, it'll be finishing, watching the practice tape, start getting ready for third down, which is what we practice tomorrow. And 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 be up here late tonight working on that and then back at it Thursday or excuse me Wednesday morning and then on we go but certainly um you know I'd be I'd love to sit up here and give you coach speak about how focused I am on the game and I don't think about all that other stuff but that's a bunch of crap I mean I'm fired up and excited and, and can't wait and I talked to the team about it this morning I mean one of the things we talked about as a team was controlling your emotions that that Saturday is a big – or Saturday night is going to be a big deal for all of us, and there's going to be a lot of excitement and energy and all that stuff, and we got to make sure we don't go in there and we're just so emotional that we go in there and lose our minds and forget about what we have to do to prepare to play. And I told them, I said, I'm in the same boat. I mean, I'm going to be jacked up when we do Gamecock walk and, and jacked up when we do uh, – when 2001 plays and all that stuff. But you also got to remember what's important and focusing on, uh, on the task at hand as well. Kevin Harrison, Cam Smith going to be available? To yeah, be uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Should have mentioned them also. Yeah, Cam was out there today. Kevin should be good. And Cam was out there today and uh, practiced, looked uh, looked fantastic. And, and credit Cam for his rehab and the way that he's handled everything. I mean, he's a guy that when he first got hurt, East Carolina was probably the most likely realistic for him to be back. I mean, there was a chance all along that he'd be back for the first game. I didn't lie to you guys, but it was – Best, best, best case scenario. And Cam's absolutely attacked uh, his rehab to be able to go out there. And, and you know, Cam, uh, I think our, Cam would love to play 70 plays Saturday night if he could. He was out there in practice today and, and looked uh, looked great. And tomorrow being September 1st and you all being able to get back out on the road for the first time in forever and contacting – Juniors and all that, how excited are you guys for, for that, I guess, point in the, the recruiting phase? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously the first step was June 1st when they were able to come visit us, and now it's excited to, exciting to be able to uh, uh, get out and visit them. So couldn't be more excited about it, having recruits here on Saturday night. Uh, some of our coaches will be out on Friday at some high school games on Friday night, and and that's the, uh, that's the next part of it. So love being able to get out and – spread the message of Gamecock football and go watch some high school football games and, and uh, fired up to be able to start communicating with current juniors in high school. Excited to be able to get it back out on the road and, and uh, visit their schools and watch some Friday night football in person. And I'm looking forward to being able to do that myself when time allows. Shane, uh, breaking down Zeb's skill set a little bit from your vantage point, 
Is he a pocket guy? Does he bring some mobility like Luke does? How much different will the offense be with him under center and operating it for you guys? Yeah, um, you know, he and Jason are probably more alike from a skill set standpoint than than Luke. You know, Luke's a little bit different. Not that Luke can't sit in the pocket and throw, but uh, Luke's probably got – not probably. Luke does have a little bit more athleticism if he breaks out of the pocket and being able to be a threat to run the football. But, you know, Zeb's not a statue back there either. Um, you know, probably the biggest challenge for him was just getting in football shape and losing some weight once he became the quarterback, which he's tried to do uh, also. So we haven't we haven't changed the offense. I mean, obviously, Sat's going to cater to what Zeb and Jason are most comfortable with uh, as they go into Saturday night. But it's not like we've – changed anything I would say more his his skill set is you know more of your pure drop back passer that that is athletic enough to, to run the football he's not a bad athlete by any stretch of the imagination now I don't know if he's going to go out there if he and Luke Doty go race Luke's probably going to win every single time uh, but it doesn't mean that Luke that Zeb's a statue back there and can't move either he's athletic enough to get himself out of trouble and, and Jason has as well I mean Jason's really improved that aspect of his game and and uh, being able to get himself out of trouble in the pocket. You know, running back's a position that's obviously going to roll a lot over the course of a game. But what what goes into to making that decision this week on on who gets the first first carries? Uh, good good question. A lot of it is you know production since spring practice and and preseason camp and and Coach Hardesty. He, you know, like all of our guys on offense, I mean, he tracks everything and holds guys accountable for everything. So whether it be, you know, good plays or not so good plays, it's kind of an inventory of everything that we've done in preseason camp. And, uh, you know, having said that, we'll see how practice goes this week. I mean, they're all going to play. Uh, who takes the first carry? I don't know. You know, we'll figure that out later this week. And a lot of it may be based on personnel as well. You know, whatever Sat decides the first play of the game is going to be on Saturday night, it may be something that we have a specific package for Juju and Juju's on the field for that. Or maybe it's maybe it's uh, uh, Marshawn or maybe it's Kevin or maybe it's Zaquandre. I don't know. You know, may who knows? May not be any running backs out there. Maybe three running backs out there. we got a great group, so we'll just see what the first play holds. Shane, I know on the opening night, everyone has to have butterflies, and those butterflies are probably a little bit larger if you've never been in an environment and atmosphere like you'll have here on Saturday night. Is that comforting to you, knowing that Zeb has seen some of that atmosphere while he was at Iowa State, and did that uh, help give him a little bit of an edge when it came time to decide who was going to be the starter? Yeah, sure. Uh, and and. Yes, that wasn't really a deciding factor that we didn't think Jason could handle that. He certainly can. Um, but certainly the fact that Zeb's been in big games before, he's played in the Big 12 at you know, Oklahoma and Texas and <clears throat> in front of 80-plus thousand and, and whatnot at some of the stadiums you have in that league. So it's certainly uh, a confidence, not builder, but gives you confidence as a coach that it won't be his first time in that environment. But you know, Jason is uh, – he didn't play in front of those size crowds at St. Francis, but I'll say this about Jason. I mean, he he elevates his game when the stakes are the highest, in my opinion, whether it be the Garnet and Black game when he made some really nice plays out there in April, whether it be in practice when we go in the stadium and have scrimmages. Uh, I think the brighter the lights from what I've seen, uh, the better that Jason plays. Now, obviously, he hasn't been in lights as bright as what it's going to be on Saturday night, but I don't have any worries about him going out there and, and playing playing well. Hey, Shane, obviously, as we're hearing, you've had a lot of personnel decisions to make throughout fall camp. One area that was, that was mostly settled was with your field goal unit between White and Kai Kroger and Matthew Bailey. You know, how have they – how has their fall camp been? And what's your level of confidence as far as, as that unit in the game? Yeah, really good. Um, those are guys you just kind of – I said it in the preseason or maybe even at SEC media days, my dad used to always say when you've got a good kicking game and no specialists return, that you got to – that's one of the things that – uh, uh, precedes a good football team, you know. So having those guys back at punter and kicker and, and all those guys returning certainly is a security blanket for us. They've had really good preseasons. They've improved on last year. And I like the fact that Pete Limbo, I think I mentioned it before to you guys, but Pete Limbo doesn't coach a position, or maybe it was on the radio show I mentioned it, I'm sorry, but he doesn't coach a position. 
So all he does is just work with those guys. So his, the position he coaches, it's not like a lot of places where the special teams coach is coaching the tight ends or the defensive backs or the running backs. He is the special teams coach, so he's a great resource for me during practice because he's another set of eyes that's a former head coach. But more importantly, he's able to get over there and work with those specialists from the time they step on the field until uh, – until the practice is over. You know, a lot of places I've been, the, the kickers, when they're not kicking, they're inside playing video games or they're in the indoor playing with a wall or whatever, not with our crew. I mean, they're working and you, you're just as likely to look over there and seeing our guys doing tackling drills as you are kicking footballs. So, you know, that's a, uh, an asset for us that we're able to do that. Shayna, everything's, you know, been very good, kind of golden for you since you got hired eight months ago. This Saturday, of course, social media being what it is, the first time there's a place somebody doesn't agree with, somebody's going to tweet about it. How do you handle that? Do you know what's coming? Is that part of your, your pregame preparation, knowing that this Saturday everything might start or, or there might be some things that aren't so golden? Yeah, um, absolutely. It's kind of like the honeymoon and then here we go. So uh, that's just part of it. I mean, I want to coach somewhere where you have – uh, passionate fans that are that are into it, and we certainly have unbelievably passionate fans here at Carolina uh, that won't be afraid to voice their displeasure for decisions that we don't make. Uh, and that's just you know that's part of it. I'm not gonna you know run into the locker room and all of a sudden jump on Twitter and look at my mentions. I can assure you that after the game, um, maybe after a win, <laughs> uh, but. But certainly not after a loss or where we don't play well. But no, I mean that's it's it's part of it. Love a passionate fan base, and and we have it. But um, you know, I grew up in the house of, or grew up the son of a uh, football coach, and and you know, grew up that way. And probably the biggest thing for me is with our with my children is they've had it pretty good here for the last four years. And not that it's not going to be here at South Carolina, but I mean, all my kids know is the Orange Bowl, the Rose Bowl, the uh, where we go last, or um, Peach Bowl at at, uh, at Oklahoma, and then we let we won the Big Twelve last year, and I wasn't there for the Cotton Bowl, so that's pretty much all they remember, especially my youngest. So it'll be uh, it uh, under, making them understand that you've had it pretty good the last four years, where you've won ten or eleven games or twelve or more, uh, and I hope we do this year as well. But just preparing my f children for. Uh, uh, how good they've had it the last few years as well, which we're going to have it here at some point soon too, hopefully this year. Shane, from a Luke standpoint, just what's the realistic timeline of when he might be able to actually put on some pads and practice with you guys? I would hope, uh, if not this week, certainly next week. You know, I mean, our, uh, we'll see how it goes. He's in tennis shoes. He's not. Uh, he's not in the boot anymore. He's not on the scooter. He's not in an air cast. I mean, he was out at practice following the quarterbacks around and was in tennis shoes uh, today. So I think he'll continue to progress. It's only Tuesday. We'll see what happens Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Hopefully he comes along. But I think it's very realistic that that as we go into next week that he'd be getting really, really close uh, to 100%. Jalen Dickerson and Jakari both ended up on the two deep. Just what have you seen from them and the progress they've made to have them earn that spot? Jalen and who? I'm sorry. Uh, Jakari Caldwell. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking defense and defense. Uh, just making plays. Uh, Jalen Dickerson, older older guy that uh, certainly motivated and didn't get to go through spring practice, but certainly came on at the end of spring practice, got to go the last couple days, I think, in practice. And just as, you know, he's a leader and, and guy that somebody on the team respects. I know there were a couple issues this summer, and I was talking to a couple of the defensive backs about their thoughts on some things, and they were like, "Well, let's go talk. Let's go talk to Jalen. You know, he's the guy that we go to when there's questions like that." And him and Jalen Foster have been, both been fantastic back there from a leadership standpoint. And then, uh, and then Jakari, you know, he and Ortre are working over there uh, together as well with. Um, with Josh Van and, and, you know, still trying to figure out what that rotation is going to be. But Jakari is a big body that uh, we have size at the wide receiver position, and he's done a nice job of using his size uh, to his advantage. And, and all those guys are continuing to, you know, continuing to compete. I mean, we feel pretty confident saying that Joyner and, and Van and, and Brooks, if there's a top three, would be your top three. Right now, that's why they're listed as the starter. And then after that, all those guys are continuing to compete and come along. And and uh, a lot of it will be based on the play that we have called and the personnel we want in the game. And a lot of it will be situational uh, as well, depending on you know where we are on the field.
So just with Zeb Nolan, you know, coming back in and everything, whenever Luke Doty is healthy and 100 percent again, how much competition will there be between them? You know, is there a like chance I told that, David, we're worried yes. about Eastern Illinois this week. And then no, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Gotcha. We're trying to beat Eastern Illinois gotcha. and then we'll get Luke healthy and then we'll figure about all that after that. Thank you. Thank you. Shane, you mentioned being able to have a guy like Pete Limbo on the sideline and how much of an asset that can be since he has that head coaching experience. Outside of Pete, and I guess you can include Pete in there as well, what will it look like on Saturday in terms of the coaches that will be up in the box and who will be um, down on the field? Yeah, uh, Tori and Gray will be in the box. Mark Satterfield will be on the box. And Kimberly, I think, is what we have going in the box. You know, So those three guys will be up there. Uh, now, obviously, that's as of we stand today. Things may change as we get closer to game time and figuring out the way that we want to you know, utilize certain – or where we want to – position people because a lot of that is dependent on the you know not everybody in the program is allowed to have uh, a headset on in the press box or on the field certain guys aren't allowed to have a microphone where they can talk so you have to you know you really have to that's another head coach thing you got to think about you got to be strategic and who's where and who can do what because not every single person that's on the coaching staff graduate assistant analyst student assistant can have headphones on and some of them can't have microphones on so it's kind of working through that but that's the plan as far as the 10 uh, on-field coaches are right now and again if we get closer to Saturday and feel like we need to do something different we can I mean I've been places where I was at Georgia one year and one of the coaches that started in the press box finished the game on the field just because there were issues that were going on during the game and he felt like he needed to get down there and and get it right so I don't think we're going to have any of that but we can always adjust as we go through get closer to kickoff Good. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful week.